Hallelujah. Mighty man of war. Thank you, Jesus. You are the father to the fatherless. You're the mother to the motherless. The husband to the widow. You're the help to the helpless. My healer. You are my deliverer. Come and do what only you can do. You raise the dead, you make the barren fruitful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yahweh, Yahweh, come and do what only you can do. Mighty man of war, lion of Judah. We call your name, oh God, hallelujah. Yahweh, Yahweh, oh, come and do what only you can do. Yahweh, we call you by your name. Nobody can do the things you do. Halabosh. We call your name, oh Father, this morning. Oh, we say, come and do what only you can do, Jesus. What only you can do. Go in your way. We call you by your name, oh God. We call you by your name this morning. Hallelujah, Lord, I shout about. We worship, we bow down, we worship you this morning. It is a beautiful morning you have given us. And we worship you, King of Glory. Kabalo, Shipalado, Shalada. Ikabo, Sokaba. Come and do the. Yahweh. Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. We call your name, oh God. We call him a Kalabosha. Hey. Yahweh. Yahweh. Come and do what only you can do. Hallelujah. Let's lift our voice and give him praise this Sunday morning. This morning is a Wednesday morning. Hallelujah. And we give God praise. We bless his name. He that liveth forever. We want to thank God for the gift of life. We thank him for his mercies, his grace that never ceases. Every brand new day is a brand new opportunity. I tell you, every brand new day is a brand new mercy. And the Lord has given us another beautiful day. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. Today is the sixth of July. And the Lord has given it to us. And we are glad to be alive in the land of the living. We give God praise. We bless his holy name. We are thanking him for the great things he is doing in our midst. We are not taking it for granted. We are thanking him for the gift of life. We are thanking him for his mercy. We are thanking him for all the good things he is doing in our lives. We are not taking it for granted. We say may all glory, may all honor, may all adoration be ascribed unto his holy name. It is indeed 
the day the Lord has made. And we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to rejoice no matter what is happening. When good things happen, you rejoice. When bad things seem to happen, you still rejoice. You rejoice because it, you are not serving God or praising him because of the things that have happened. You serve him by faith. He said without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we thank him for the gift of today. Rejoice and be glad. And the things you are still expecting him to do, when you thank him for the things he has done, and I tell you something, he will do much more, much, much more, because he will recognize that you appreciate him for those things that you are taking for granted. Thank him for life. Thank him because you have no oxygen plugged to your nose. Thank him because you are not the one in the hospital bed. Thank him because so many things are happening and he has been preserving you. And those things you have not yet received. Say, Lord, I, I am expecting this. I'm expecting that. They have not come yet but I'm thanking you for the things I have. Thank you for that gift of life is given to you and you will see him do amazing things in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning to you. Of course, my name is Pastor Joy and I'm glad to be here this morning declaring the word of God as God has commanded us. You know, it's a beautiful thing to hear the Lord speak. It's a beautiful thing to be in the Lord's employ. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing to, to speak for the word of God. And I'm here this morning in the platform of Behold Your God to declare the counsel that the Lord has given to us. We are declaring the word of God from this platform. We speak for the word of life. We declare with boldness what our God has said. We rebel against the works that are rebelling against our God. We declare what God has given to us every single weekday. We declare the word of God, the counsel of God. We speak into the land. We speak into the lives of the people. We liberate those the enemy has bound i tell you it's not by mind it is not by power it is by the spirit of the living god and when we speak the spirit of the lord begins to do what he has promised to do i'm so excited that by the declarations of our mouth we frustrate the works of wicked and i'm so excited by the declarations of our word the lord confirms it and the devil is put to shame and i'm so excited that people that have been held for years under the captivity of the enemy they are set free at the frequency of the releasing of the word of life and i'm here once again by the commandment of god to speak forth the word of god and it is called behold your god and in this week we have been looking at the topic behold our God as he really is. I'm so excited about this topic, beholding our God as he really is. And we have been looking at the things, there are things we have never really understood about our God. The Bible says that when Jesus came, he is the S Express image of the invisible God. He showed us what God was like. He showed us as a man that walked on earth. He showed us. He said, no man have seen the Father. The only begotten of the Father have declared him. That is the Lord Jesus. He showed us what God looks like. And God, we saw, began to display his attributes, the things that are his nature, his character from the Old Testament to the New Testament. We as men have have only looked at the judgment of God. We have looked at how God, you know, and we um, personally, I, I, I have always had this. I think God is, is this God that is so high, almost unreachable. We have to please him. Oh, we have to please him. If we don't please him, come on. So there is this fear that is not healthy. We always have about God. And when Jesus came, he began to tell us, yes, your God is your heavenly father. He actually told us, do not fear little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Wow. You mean our father have good pleasure towards us? But all through the scripture, we saw that God has always had good pleasure towards us. We saw from the very beginning, God's good pleasure displayed on mankind. He has never treated anybody according to our sin deserve. He has always had patience. He has always had compassion. He is really grieved at the consequences 
of the sin we do. So this week we are looking at seeing God as he really is. I am determined that as we see this God as he really is, all the lies of the devil that has been sponsored into our mentality will lose their hold. And then we see God as he is. He is a gracious God. He is a God of compassion. It will do a whole lot of adjustment in our work with God if we really see God as he is. So we are going to look at this. We have looked at seeing God in G Egypt when he commanded Moses to go and meet Pharaoh and speak the word to Pharaoh. He didn't give him money. He didn't give him some weapons. He gave him his word. Oh my God. And he began to use the word and declare, thus says the Lord. You know, when we say thus says the Lord, we are walking in the realm of the supernatural. We are engaging the same weapons, the same Amory, the same weapons that the Lord uses, he will speak his words and things were created. And that was what happened in the land of Egypt. We saw where God was judging the land of Egypt, where God was demanding that they let his people go. We saw how stiff-necked the, the Egyptians were. Pharaoh refused to let them go, and God was sending his plagues. And something was very interesting in that place. We came to a point where we saw that God was telling them, if you don't let my people go, I'm going to send this. He turned their water to blood. He sent them frogs. You know, I was looking at this kind of thing the Lord was sending. He sent them flies and he was sending them. A particular time he was, he told them, he would actually predict to them what was going to happen. For them not to have any doubt who was dealing with them. He said they're going to send them hell. And that hell, he said it was never like anything they have seen before. And he warned them and said, if you fear the Lord, you better bring in your cattle and your servants in the field because this hell I'm going to send is going to consume them. In that place, we saw that God was really interested even in the Egyptians. He didn't want them to lose their means of livelihood. He didn't want them to, to come to nothingness in their business. He really wants them to acknowledge that he is God, just like we are seeing today in the midst of all that is happening. I remember studying Revelation and seeing all the things that was revealed that is going to happen. You know, some people have doubted, will it happen after the rapture of the church? Will it happen before the rapture, we have had so many arguments and so many school of thought that have said so many things about the coming of Christ and the judgment of God on it. God said clearly that the reason why he sends judgment is for people to acknowledge him as God. The Bible said very clearly in the book of Revelation that when these things were happening, men repented not from their fornication, their evil, their uncleanness, their idolatry, and every of those things. And the reason why God is giving us uncertain times is because he wants people to realize that things are not steady in this life. That the reason why he gave them life is for them to seek their creator. And men kept missing this. They kept missing the purpose. And when God sends plagues, it's for them to acknowledge. And we see that he did it in Genesis, right? He did it in Exodus. We saw when he judged them and then he was still caring for them. The Bible says that everyone that feared the name of the Lord, they took in their cattle, they took in their servants in the house, and they were not destroyed. But those who didn't care about what commandment God is giving, they left, who is that? Who is that Moses? Who is that one? Is it not this man that was among the slaves that we even raised in this palace? Don't mind him. Some of them did not obey. And we saw that God really sent the hell, and the Bible says those people that didn't hearken to the voice of the Lord were all destroyed. And this is the time again when God is sending plagues on earth. This generation I have not seen, I have not heard all the history I have read, I have not seen any generation displaying the level of wickedness like this generation. And God is bent on making sure people return. He told us yesterday in the book of uh, Ezekiel, he does not uh, delight in the, in, the, in the death of the wicked. God does not really enjoy it when wicked people die. He will send you word and send you word again. And in case you are a wicked person here, hearing me. You know what God talks wicked? A wicked man is somebody who has neglected to hearken to the voice of God. They are called lawless people. Jesus said he would say those that are lawless. He said, depart from me, you that practice lawlessness. They are the wicked. Those who do not want to obey what God has said. They are those that are practicing lawlessness. And we see that God really wants people not only to obey him, but to depart from evil. And that is God's judgment. That is the essence of God's judgment. 
all the uncertainties, the insecurities that we see in the world today is because the Lord is calling people. He is calling them to come to the point where they will acknowledge him. Do you know what? He told Pharaoh, for this intent I raised it up, for this reason I raised it up, that you may know indeed that I am God. Acknowledge my mind and, and then submit to me. They said, no, we want to be a, a, our own God. We have to do our own things. And that is why judgment will come for any man, any woman, any boy, any girl who hears the words of God and chooses another way, they are certain that the judgment of God is going to come. He is called the judge of all the earth. God judges the entire earth. Remember Abraham? He was standing and interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. And in that point, he said, will not the judge of the whole earth do right? Will you condemn the righteous along with the wicked? Far be it from you, Lord, to do that. And the truth is that God never condemns the righteous along with the wicked. He always put a separation. He will separate, just like Jesus said, he said on that day he will separate between the sheep and the goat. The sheep are those that obey him. The goats are those that are rebellious against him. God always puts a demarcation. And I ask you, which category do you belong? Do you belong to the sheep or to the goat? It is you that will tell yourself, am I at peace with God or am I rebelling against God? Am I living in lawlessness? You know the definition of lawlessness? Those who have not submitted themselves to the laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Those who are still finding it difficult to forgive themselves, to forgive somebody that offended them, who has not come to say, Lord, I really need forgiveness from you so that I can really forgive myself and forgive everyone that have hurt me. If you are still holding grievances, you are sure you are not among the sheep of God. It doesn't matter what you are called. If you are still holding grievances, it is very clear. Jesus said, if you, can, if you have not forgiven anyone from your heart, neither will your heavenly father forgive you your sins. He gave us a parable about that. And this is how you can look and say, wow, am I really a lawless person? Or am I walking according to the law of the Lord? Beholding God as he is delivers us from so many things. It delivers us from mediocrity. It delivers us from the lies of the devil. It helps us to walk accordingly. And then you will fulfill your days on earth. You will fulfill the reason why you came on earth. I told God far, far back so many years ago, Lord, I just want to place you. Whatever be the cost, Jesus said you sit down and count the cost. Whatever be the cause, I just want to please you in this life. Even if people laugh at me and mock me and say this one is outdated, she doesn't look like it. I just want to please God. I realize on time that we have an enemy who will present some things to you and then by the time you start following those things, you are far away from God. I tell you something, God wants us to see him as he really is. And I'm glad for the word that God has given us. We are continuing as we look at beholding our God as he really is i want to read some scriptures that is the one that jesus talked about i want to read the book of john yes i'll read john chapter 7 i'll read john chapter 9 yes in john chapter 7 i'll read verse 50 and 53 i'll read john chapter 7 44 and then we go into the details praise the lord john chapter 7 verse 50 says nicodemus said unto them he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our Lord judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee riseth no prophet, and every one, every man went unto his own house. It was Jesus they were talking about. Now, John chapter 7 verse 44 says, And some of them which have been, which have taken him, and some of them could have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Verse 45 says, Then came the officers to the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they said unto him, unto them, Why have you not brought him? The officers said, Never man speak like this man. We are going somewhere. John chapter 
9, verse 40 and 41 says, And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Wow. Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you could have no sin. But now you say you see. Therefore your sin remain. What are we talking about? We look at how Jesus was bringing out man and showing him the display of how God sees him. Jesus was the man that came. He was fully man. He displayed some things. The Bible says that when men had him, they wondered. The Bible says he spoke with authority. He was not speaking like the Pharisees. He was not teaching like the Pharisees. He was teaching them with authority. And we saw he spoke at a particular time and they wanted to arrest Jesus. By the time they came, they had him speak. They returned back with their handcuff or whatever it is they used to arrest those days. And they asked him, why didn't you bring him? They told him, never man speak like this man. As far as mankind is concerned, there is no words you can hear anywhere that is like the words that Jesus speak. He speak it because that is the only salvation for mankind. The men of his time, the best of the men of his time, couldn't, you know, comprehend. They beheld him speak the words. He expressly gave them what the heavenly father was like. We saw him handle issues. We saw him speak. Look at him handling the Pharisees. The Pharisees thought that they really knew something and he healed a blind man that is in John chapter 9 and by the time he was speaking the Bible says the Pharisees were they had him say these things and they said are we also blind Jesus said to them if you were blind you could have had no sin but now you say you see therefore your sin remained he was able to bring to the point where they can really see themselves as they were and then see the heavenly father as he is I thank God because the scriptures told us there are many, 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 many Pharisees that came to the faith. They believed him. Some of them were not bold enough to really say, yes, we stand with Jesus. Some were scared of the structure, the system of the day. Secretly, they believed Jesus. But the Bible told us after he rose from the dead, so many of them came out openly. They became obedient to the faith. They submitted themselves to the faith of the disciples. We are looking at this word that became flesh. How he presented the father. How people beheld him. In fact, the apostle John had this to say about Jesus. He said, we beheld him. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Looking at Jesus, they saw the invisible God. And we are looking at beholding God, seeing how he treats us, seeing how he... And I want to read another scripture in the book of John chapter 8. Oh my God, it's a long reading. I'm going to read very fast from verse 2. The Bible says, John chapter 8 from verse 2. And early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Verse 6 says, This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. And Jesus stood down with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. And again he stooped down to write on the ground. Verse 9, and they which had it been convinced by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest even to the least. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus lifted up himself and saw no one but the woman, he said unto her, woman where is those dying accusers? Had no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. Now look at what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Jesus displayed the way the heavenly father sees us. And if we can behold this, we can walk steadily. There is this thing we all suffer from the devil. It's called accusations, condemnations. 
The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. You need to be in Christ Jesus. You need to acknowledge your sins. You need to confess your sins. You need to know that someone died in your place. And when you accept him, there is no more condemnation. We saw a woman that was caught in adultery. She was a sinner as she, as, as she was brought before him, the Lord Jesus. Now we saw how Jesus handled him, handled her. The Bible says that Jesus said, if you are without sin, cast the first stone. As we are all casting stones on one another, this one is this, this one is a fornicator, this one is a gossip, this one is an adulterer, this one is a whatever. Jesus is busy telling us that God accepts you as long as you acknowledge your sin, confess your sin. There is a beautiful scripture found in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We read it, was it yesterday? We read that scripture. We saw that God was not putting men's sins against them. He is reconciling the entire human race to him. But the entire human race will perish unless they come to him. That's why we are boldly declaring the word on air. We declare it on the streets. We declare it in the church. We declare it. Let man hear. Everyone we come in contact with, we, are make, we make it our duty to present Christ. He has paid the price, but you need to accept the gift, and then you will be saved. You need to know that God is not counting those things the devil is counting against you. And if you can see it, and see it truly the way Jesus presented it, you know what's going to happen? All the lies of the devil will be broken over your life. You are going to trust God. Father, let me see me the way you see me. Some of you are full of guilt. Some of you can't even forgive yourself. You remember what you have done and you play, it, you play the mistakes over and over and it's crippling your productivity. The Lord is not counting your sins against you. He only wants you to come to him and receive the grace, receive forgiveness, and then you receive from him the power to live above those things that are crippling you. There are people that are being crippled because of their, their inability to really do things the way they want to do it. Paul said it in the book of Romans chapter 7, when I want to do good, evil is present with me. And when I keep doing this evil, I wonder who would deliver me from this body of sin. Verse 8 of Romans says, thanks be to God. He said from verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation. After he was asking this question, who would deliver me? He said, thanks be to God. In Christ Jesus, I've been delivered. If you walk in the flesh, you will serve the Lord of sin. If you walk in the spirit, you serve the Lord of God. And those that walk in the spirit are called the sons of God. And I'm asking you, are you a son of God? Are you really walking in the spirit? Have you received the power to deny yourself those cravings? Because there is a school of thought today. It's actually a doctrine of devils that say, people, whatever you feel in your body, as a Christian, you have those desires, you can go ahead and experience praise them it doesn't matter and god has already forgiven you that is a doctrine of destruction if you live in sin if you express those desires you are heading to internal destruction the paul said i die daily i don't de i deny myself those cravings we are called morticians he said mortified therefore your bodies that are upon the earth i want to trust god you are going to behold god as he is you are going to see how god sees you and you're going to cast out all those things that have been entangling you can we pray together our time is almost up and i'm trusting god to give you an encounter i am trusting god to show you who he really is how he sees you when you fall into sin how how he sees you when 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 you, you you disappoint him you disappoint him and you and the devil is there bringing accusations against you and god is really waiting like the father of the prodigal son he has always been looking out for him and when he saw him afar off he ran to meet him that is how your heavenly father sees you and today you can say lord help me help me the guilt of sin the heavy weight of iniquity is weighing me down. I need to come back home. You're a Christian. You fell. Remember, David was a man after God's own heart. There was a time he fell. Yes, the consequences were there, but the Lord forgave him. I don't know the state you may be in, but you might need God's forgiveness. 
You need God to remove those shackles of guilt the enemy has put around you. I keep hearing guilt, guilt, guilt. I don't know the guilt the enemy has been parading all over you and you have been looking at it. The Lord delivers you from guilt right now. The spirit of guilt, I come against you. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Who I'm talking to is a child of God. But the guilt of what has happened is really gripping you. And it seems you seem not to lose yourself from it. Today, Jesus sets you free. The shackles of guilt are broken over your life. You rise upon your feet and come to the loving arms of your everlasting Father. Can we pray together? Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the spirit of grace. I receive grace today. I walk out of the chains that the enemy have changed me with. Lord, I walk to you. Deliver me from guilt. Deliver me from condemnation. And I ask that today you give me a revelation of who you are. May I behold you as you really are in the name of Jesus. I am trusting the Lord that you will grow in grace. You know, the generation we are living in is a horrible generation. I said, I have said it before. I'm repeating it now. To live in this generation is a whole calling. Is a calling a full-time calling to live in this generation as a child of God. You can receive grace to walk steadily without defiling yourself, without staining your garments, and you trust God every day that your head lack no oil. He said, let your head lack no oil and let your garment always be white. You can receive grace every day that you walk steadily without defiling yourself, without all the corruption. You see the waves everywhere full of vomit full of thinking things, full of defilement. You can walk steadily without defiling yourself. Say, Lord, I need that grace. And as I trust you today, I declare from henceforth, I walk steady. I walk worthy. I walk as a child of God in the name of Jesus. And I want to make a declaration today. I am making declaration against the works of wickedness. I am making declarations about the work of God in the land. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus that every activity of hell, every work of wickedness, crippling the destinies of men, today we cripple them. Every spell from the pit of hell, from the coven of occultic men, from the marine kingdom, we declare clear that the demons on assignment are arrested we bind them that is arrest come on now we bind them and we send them back to their sender we declare that every arrow of failure every arrow of affliction every arrow that makes people I I I incapable of achieving what they are saying. We retrieve those arrows. We send them back to where they come from. We declare in the name of Jesus that every spell, every covering cast over the people, we declare it is being destroyed. And we release right now everything God has said. Today is the 6th of July. We declare only the counsel of God is permitted to function today. And we lift up the banner of the blood of Jesus. We come against everyone that is an agent of darkness. You're a man, you're a woman, you are propagating the work of wickedness. We come against you, we cripple your work, we have authority over you, we exercise our authority over you right now. For this reason, the Son of God was made manifest that he may destroy the works of darkness. We declare today that every work of darkness, the assignment given to you, agents of darkness, it fails you now. We lift up the blood of Jesus. Jesus to speak over the land it is written that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea and so shall it be in our generation the knowledge of the Lord shall increase on earth men will seek their God they shall behold their God as he is in the name of Jesus God bless you the Lord keep you today is Wednesday we're having our Bible study in our church and here in Accra in case you are in greater Accra region here in Tishu we are having our Bible study we are using the conference hall of Dakota Hotel, Hotel Dakota, just opposite Tishi, Philip, uh, 
police station. It will be a wonderful time if we see you and we're going to have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. Is our communion service, is our Bible study, and your life can never remain the same again. I'm trusting the Lord that the work of your hands shall be blessed. In, in, as, in, just as you do the work, you don't do any defrauding. You are working. God said, I will bless the work of your hands. So as you go forth to work genuinely, the work of your hands shall be blessed and nothing can work against you. God bless you. See you tomorrow. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, Yahweh. Hey, Yahweh.